The anime begins with a scene in a forest where we see a crusher, and in front of it are two children lying unconscious. One of them is in a very critical condition. One of their arms is severed, and due to severe blood loss, the child is on the brink of death. Seeing the children in this state, the crusher says, how foolish they are, risking their lives. While saying this, the crusher transforms into a girl. The girl then approaches the injured child and says, Ash, Ash, you deserve better than this, you can't die here. After saying this, the girl transfers all her power to the child, causing the severed arm to automatically start healing, as if the child had become immortal. Just as the child is almost fully healed, they wake up in the real world. So, whatever we saw earlier seems like the child thought it was just a dream. However, it wasn't a dream, because we can see the child's arm bandaged and plastered in the real world, indicating that everything was real. What truly happened will be revealed in the next episode. Next, we are taken to the following scene featuring a high school academy. Above the academy, we can see dragons flying, indicating that in this anime world, dragons exist. Inside the academy, we are introduced to our main protagonist, Ash, who is the subject of ridicule by his classmates. They say that Ash was born without a dragon, and despite being of age, he still doesn't have one of his own. This makes him seem weak, and he often asks his friend for help in obtaining a dragon. From this conversation, we understand that in this world, every child has their own dragon that assists them in battles and adventures, but Ash has neither a dragon nor magical abilities. Because of this, everyone in the academy sees him as trash. However, Ash doesn't care about the ridicule and continues attending the academy every day, ignoring what others say. During class, the teacher is teaching the students how to properly control their dragons. Even though Ash doesn't have a dragon, he still listens intently. After class ends, we see Ash sitting alone, and soon a friend approaches him. The friend calls him Ash, and it turns out Ash's full name is Ash Ash. They both talk about dragons, and their conversation is interrupted when they see a popular girl in the academy who has a very unique and powerful dragon. This girl is very boastful about her dragon. Later, we see Ash and his friend walking, and his friend asks if Ash will participate in the dragon race. Ash replies that he doesn't have a dragon, so how could he possibly participate? His friend suggests that he borrow a dragon. While they're talking, everyone's attention in the academy is focused on the popular girl mentioned earlier. When the girl enters the academy, many students gather around her because she is the most popular girl in school. Seeing this, Ash's friend jokes, please introduce me to her. My life would be perfect. The girl hears everything he says, and Ash quickly walks away, pretending not to know his friend. The next scene shows a training ground where all the students are practicing with their dragons. Even though Ash doesn't have his own dragon, he trains with a practice dragon. When the match begins, we see Ash fighting well, even with just a practice dragon. At the same time, our attention is drawn to another student we saw earlier in the episode, Sylvia. Sylvia has the only dragon in the academy that can fly. She can perform more than one type of attack, which makes Sylvia very proud of her dragon. While Sylvia was training on the other side, we see Ash, who was also training. Suddenly, Ash's opponent attacked him with great force, causing Ash and his dragon to be thrown into the air, accidentally colliding with Sylvia's dragon. As a result, Sylvia's dragon lost its balance and started screaming. Seeing her dragon scream, the training session was immediately halted. After the training ended, the coach came over and scolded Ash. Even though Ash felt innocent, he still apologized. When Ash turned around after apologizing, he saw Sylvia, who looked very angry. Seeing Sylvia so furious, Ash tried to apologize again, but instead, Sylvia slapped him. Despite being slapped, Ash didn't retaliate because he felt it was his fault. However, Sylvia wasn't satisfied with just slapping Ash. She began to humiliate him in front of everyone. Sylvia first mocked Ash for not having a dragon, then cracked a few jokes. Ash remained unfazed until Sylvia started talking about Ash's parents, which made Ash's anger explode. He stepped forward to attack Sylvia, but his friends stopped him and said, she's just a girl. Everyone will side with her. Don't start a fight. Hearing his friend's words, Ash realized that fighting here was pointless, so he said, I don't want to fight you, but please take back what you said about my parents. Hearing this, Sylvia replied, 
I won't take back my words, but as a princess and the prettiest girl at this academy, I can offer you a solution. If you can beat me in the upcoming dragon race, I might consider taking back my words, but I'm sure you won't be able to defeat me. Hearing this, Ash confidently, even without a dragon, responded, I'll beat you in the next dragon race, Princess Sylvia. The next day, the dragon race was held. Before the race began, Reba announced that the winner of the race would get a chance to be her boyfriend. Hearing this, everyone became very excited about the race. When the race flag was raised, the race began. Ash tried his best to win the race and managed to surpass almost all the participants, but Sylvia remained ahead because her dragon had the advantage of flying, avoiding many obstacles like rivers, mountains, and forests that Ash had to face. However, Ash remained determined to defeat Sylvia. After some time, Ash noticed that his dragon was starting to get tired. If he kept pushing, his dragon might die. So, Ash decided to stop in the forest and apologize to his dragon. I'm sorry, dragon. I was too selfish to win this race. I was too focused on restoring my pride and forgot to pay attention to your health. After all, Sylvia will win by flying, so it's okay. You can rest here. As Ash was speaking to his dragon, he heard the sound of someone falling nearby. He thought someone might be injured during the race, so he started looking for the source of the sound in the forest. After searching for a while, Ash saw a man in the ruins with a mechanical arm, which frightened him. Realizing he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, Ash ran toward the forest. The man said, This boy has great power. I can feel his aura. As Ash ran, he realized someone was chasing him, a girl who wanted to attack him. The girl turned out to be the man's servant. Ash managed to dodge the girl's attack and escape the forest, but the girl jumped at him, knocking him down. The girl was ready to attack Ash, but Ash managed to push her away. However, the girl kept her balance. But the rock the girl was standing on began to crumble, and she nearly fell into the ravine. Just in time, Ash grabbed her hand and pulled her up. However, in the process of saving the girl, Ash ended up falling into the ravine. Before the girl could save him, her master arrived and said, Don't worry, he's a spirit user. He'll save himself. Everything's fine. I'm going to die anyway. My life wasn't that special. This death will only affect my parents. No one else cares about me. So, it's better if I die. As Ash was saying this, a bright light suddenly emerged from the tattoo on his hand, leaving him confused. What is this? Am I meeting my companion as I die? He was talking about a dragon, and after the light appeared for a moment, it transformed into an egg. Seeing this, Ash believed that his dragon was inside the egg, and with that belief, he touched it. But as soon as Ash touched the egg, it cracked open, and instead of a dragon, a pink-haired girl appeared. Ash was bewildered by what was happening. However, when he held the girl, he suddenly stopped falling and slowly landed on the ground. The girl then opened her eyes and approached Ash. She wasn't wearing any clothes and immediately slapped Ash hard, sending him flying into a nearby river. After being slapped, Ash realized that this girl was extremely strong, perhaps as strong as a dragon. He tried to speak to her, but upon noticing something, he felt embarrassed and looked away, saying, You're my companion, right? Hearing this, the girl replied, Do you think you're my master? No. I'm your master, understand? You're just a servant. Hearing this, Ash was confused and asked, What? Then the scene shifted to where we see Ash and the girl in a room. The girl said, I'm very sleepy. I'm going to bed. Hearing this, Ash said, You're my companion. You should sleep outside, and I should sleep in the bed. But the girl said, Shut up and stand guard outside like a dog, then sleep. And she went to sleep. Seeing this, Ash complained, does all this have to happen to me? But no matter, at least I have a companion. In the next scene, morning arrives, and Ash is ready to leave. As he opens the door, he sees Rebecca, the most popular girl in the academy, standing there. Rebecca asks, I heard you got a companion. Can you show it to me? I need to register it. Hearing this, Ash panics and starts making excuses. Rebecca says, you should greet me with good morning. I am the president of the academy. Then, Rebecca walks into Ash's room and sees the pink-haired girl sleeping in Ash's bed without proper clothing. 
Rebecca and another student who was there begin looking at Ash suspiciously. The student said, What kind of things have you been doing at such a young age? Ash defended himself, You're misunderstanding. It's not like that. Suddenly, the pink-haired girl woke up and said, What are you all doing in my bedroom? Rebecca, with a satisfied expression, said, As you said, Ash, that this girl is your dragon, we have no problem with it. But you need to register this girl as a dragon. For that, you'll need to see Dr. Cornwell. Before leaving, Rebecca reminded him, make sure to put clothes on her before going to town. If you don't have any women's clothes, here's mine, put them on her. Ash thanked Rebecca for the clothes. In the next scene, we see the girl wearing proper clothes for the first time. She commented, human clothes are quite comfortable, but I was fine without them. Then her stomach growled from hunger. Seeing this, Ash bought her some food. As they sat down to eat, Ash said, you shouldn't be eating ice cream. You're a dragon, and you need to eat meat to become strong. The girl responded, who asked you to manage my food? I'm your master, not the other way around. Now get me more ice cream. Ash complained, what is going on here? Who's the real master? As Ash was about to go buy more ice cream, the girl suddenly fainted and fell into Ash's arms. As Ash tried to wake her up, people began gathering around, thinking they were doing something inappropriate in public. Before Ash could explain, a princess arrived and saw them in a compromising position. The princess blushed and said, I didn't expect much from you, but I didn't think you'd stoop so low to do something like this in public. While the princess was scolding Ash, a strong wind suddenly blew, and Ash saw something he wasn't supposed to. The princess realized this and immediately punched Ash hard. Sometime later, we see the princess's personal doctor tending to Ash's female dragon. After the treatment was over, before leaving, the princess apologized to Ash for speaking ill of his parents and his dragon, then left the room. After watching the princess leave, Ash felt confused. The princess's doctor quickly explained that the princess wasn't mean-spirited. It was just that, as a princess, she had a bit of pride. But at heart, she was kind. After saying this, the doctor followed the princess. Seeing all this, Ash still didn't understand why the proud princess had apologized to him. While thinking about it, Ash muttered, So, the princess is proud, but not bad at heart. As Ash spoke, a girl overheard him, lightly slapped his cheek, and said, Besides me, other than your master, you shouldn't have feelings for any other girl. You are your master's servant, so you should only think about your master. If you dare think about another girl, I'll pinch your cheek and give it to you for breakfast. In the midst of this conversation, Ash realized that someone was spying on them, but he didn't pay much attention and ignored it. Then, in the next scene, we see Ash and the girl still eating, and it was then that Ash remembered he hadn't asked the girl's name. While thinking this, Ash asked the girl, What's your name? The girl replied, I don't have a name. I mean, I really don't have a name. Seeing the girl look sad, Ash said, It's okay, that's my fault. I thought, because you're a girl, you must have a name. But since you're also mine, I'll give you a name. When I was a child, I thought that when my dragon came, I would give it this name. Since the dragon hasn't arrived, I haven't had the chance to give it the name, but now I'll give it to you. Before revealing the name, Ash said, I don't know if you'll like this name or not. I want to call you Eco. Hearing the name, the girl smiled and said, Eco? That's a beautiful name. Seeing that she liked it, Ash said, Do you know where I got this name? The first dragon in this world, owned by a dragon user, was named Eco, so I thought I'd name my dragon that. But now, I'm giving it to you. From now on, I'll call you Eco. And from that point, we'll also refer to the girl as Eco throughout the series. After Ash gave the girl a name, suddenly, she began to glow. Shortly after, the mark on Ash's hand started glowing as well. Seeing this, Ash panicked at first, but Eco said, this is our bond, don't worry. After the bonding process finished, we see a scene where Eco is in the bathroom because she had eaten too much ice cream, which upset her stomach, but now she's feeling better. Amidst this, we see a mysterious figure approach Eco with the intent to kidnap her. In the next scene, we see Ash peeking into the women's restroom, and the princess notices him. 
The princess and her doctor immediately scold Ash, saying, Hey, you pervert, what are you doing peeking into the women's restroom? Ash tried to explain, you've misunderstood. I was just worried because Iko has been inside for a long time and hasn't come out yet. Hearing the name Iko, the princess said, Iko? Oh, that girl who's with you, right? After that, the princess and her doctor entered the restroom to check, but found nothing except for some mysterious dust, indicating that Iko had been kidnapped using Fefnate dust. This dust can block someone's magical energy, causing them to faint. Realizing this, the princess and her doctor knew that Iko had been kidnapped. Upon hearing that Iko had been kidnapped, Ash prepared to go after her. However, the princess scolded him, saying, You're her master. You can use the power of your mark to track where the last use of Iko's mana was. After hearing this, Ash began using the power of his mark, and with the mana's power, several butterflies appeared to help him track Iko's whereabouts. In the next scene, we see Ash, the princess, and her doctor arriving at an old building deep in the forest. As they approached the door, the princess noticed many Fefnate stones around, which could dampen magical powers. Seeing this, the princess became suspicious. Inside the building, we see a female doctor along with some other items. In the examination room, we see Iko lying on a bed, and the female doctor intended to perform surgery on Iko to understand how a dragon could be born in the form of a human girl. The doctor said to Iko, You're a miracle. You are the first dragon born in female form, a human form. I want to study this. I'm so excited to find out how this happened. So I hope you'll support me in my research. Let's begin. After saying this, she began approaching Iko to conduct experiments on her. However, before she could do anything to Iko, the Black Princess and her personal doctor arrived at the scene. Upon arriving, the Black Princess said to the doctor, What are you doing with my wings? Hearing this, the doctor responded, Oh, nothing, just a little experiment. The Black Princess then asked again, Who are you? And who gave you the right to mess with my dragon and my wings? However, before the Black Princess could say more, the doctor used her magic and Fortnite dust to steal the magical energy from everyone present. As a result, the princess fainted, and her personal doctor also began to slowly lose consciousness. The magic also affected the black princess, who gradually began to lose consciousness as well. Seeing the black princess faint, Iko said to her, If you keep fainting like this and let me be the subject of experiments, I will never forgive you, master. Hearing Iko call her master for the first time, the Black Princess realized that she was now a master, and she couldn't give up just like that. With this thought in mind, she gathered all her courage and began using her sticker power. Seeing this, the doctor said, This phenomenon can control all types of magic. This is magic beyond any level. While thinking about this, the doctor, for the first time in her life, prepared to use magic. Without waiting, the Black Princess launched a dust magic attack at the doctor, and with one strike, the doctor was defeated. After defeating the doctor, the Black Princess immediately went to Iko, who had been crying a little, but then hit the Black Princess and said, I only called you master by accident that time. Remember, I'm your master, okay? Hearing the annoyed Iko, the Black Princess thought, This girl is so sneaky. Our scene shifts to the academy, where the Black Princess's friend said, Hey, you're becoming really popular. Hearing this, the Black Princess thought she was becoming popular because she learned to use magic, but in reality, everyone was jealous of her because she had such beautiful female friends. In this confusion, the Black Princess felt quite happy. Our scene then shifts again to class, where the Black Princess's new teacher turned out to be the doctor she had previously defeated, named Dr. Angelus Cornwell. Seeing Dr. Cornwell, the Black Princess's mind wandered, and this scene marked the end of the episode. At the beginning of Episode 3 of Dragon Academy, we see Sylvia talking to her dragon. You are so beautiful and powerful. I'm so lucky to be your master. While saying this, Sylvia's old memories surfaced, where we see Ash, the Black Princess, and Sylvia playing together in their childhood. It shows that Ash and Sylvia used to be good friends, but they no longer are. The reason for this will be revealed in upcoming episodes. As she remembered Ash, Sylvia said, He's been my rival since childhood. 
I've always been jealous of him. How can he control any dragon? Where did he learn such powerful control? While Sylvia was pondering all of this, she sensed the presence of a wild dragon. A dragon without a master, completely untamed. Sensing the dragon's power, Sylvia decided to search for it. On the other hand, we see a scene with the student council, where Ash tells Rebecca everything about how two people in the forest tried to kill him and how their weapons weren't from this city. That's when Ash met Iko, who saved his life. After hearing this, Rebecca understood who those people were and thought they weren't satisfied with the destruction from the battle years ago. Now, they might want to wipe out the entire generation of dragon users. Rebecca reflected on the chaos from years ago, and suddenly Ash and she heard a noise. They looked out the window and saw Sylvia trying to control the wild dragon. Seeing this, Ash said, she could easily control this dragon with the help of her own dragon. So why does she want to tame it herself? Rebecca replied that Sylvia saw Ash as her greatest rival in the entire academy. She wanted to learn how to control any dragon, just like Ash could, so she wouldn't fall behind. While saying this, Rebecca jumped out of the window and called her dragon, then immediately went to save Sylvia. Throughout this scene, Ash couldn't understand why a princess like Sylvia was jealous of him, just an ordinary guy. With this thought in mind, our scene shifts to Ash and Iko, where Ash is still reflecting on why Sylvia saw him as a rival. Iko realized that Ash was thinking about another girl and scolded him for being flirtatious, saying that he shouldn't think about any girl other than her. You're my slave, understand? Meanwhile, Sylvia saw a statue surrounded by children. Sylvia asked Ash, who is this? Ash explained that this was the first founder of the kingdom. That user, meaning the shield you see is called Arkansas Ark, is given by the user's dragon. How strong a dragon is determines if it can create an Arkansas. If the dragon has enough strength to create an arc, it can give it to its master, significantly increasing their power, making them nearly impossible to defeat. All of this greatly intrigued Iko, and with this, our scene transitions. In the next scene, we see the same Asian girl who tried to kill Ash in the first episode. By accident, she saw Ash and began wondering how he survived after falling off a cliff. She thought, should I kill this boy now? But no, he saved my life when I nearly fell off the cliff. I can't kill him. I won't tell my master that this boy is still alive. After all, he's just a weak child. What could he possibly do? Let him live. The scene then changes, and we see the girl's teacher, whom we saw in the first episode. Her teacher was monitoring the entire city from a very tall clock tower. The Asian girl came, and her teacher asked, did you notice anything strange in this city? The girl replied, The people here are very relaxed, and they don't misuse their dragons. Hearing this, the girl's teacher said, They may be relaxed now, but not for long. Chaos will soon unfold here. I will launch my first strike, and if that boy uses his sword... Here, we see that the boy summons a giant dragon that had already died. This means that the mysterious man has the power to summon dragons from the realm of the dead. In other words, he can summon paranormal creatures or revive dead dragons. When the dragon is summoned, Iko senses negative energy, and on the other hand, some people come to stop the dragon, including Rebecca. Rebecca uses her dragon and magic to try to stop the dragon. In the midst of all this, Iko also appears and almost defeats the dragon, but suddenly the dragon grabs her and tries to absorb her. Seeing Iko in critical condition, Ash doesn't know what to do. Without his dragon, he's just an ordinary human. Meanwhile, we see Rebecca ready to attack the dragon, and she decapitates it. Seeing this, Ash thinks the dragon is dead, but it isn't. Right after the attack, the dragon regenerates its head and immediately attacks Rebecca. However, Rebecca manages to survive the attack. During the battle between Rebecca and the dragon, we see Ash talking to Sylvia. Ash says, hurry, summon your dragon, Sylvia. But Sylvia is too frightened to move. Seeing Sylvia frozen in fear, Ash gets angry and says, is this you, your royal family? Where's your strong dragon? You're nothing, just a weak girl sitting here scared. Despite hearing all this, Sylvia doesn't respond, making Ash even angrier, and he slaps her. Do you understand? Rebecca's and Iko's lives are in danger. Wake up. After the slap, 
Sylvia regains her senses, immediately summons her dragon, and with full courage, gets ready to fight the dragon. Meanwhile, Iko is almost being digested by the dragon when suddenly a special entity, a spirit, calls to her and shows her a hologram of Ash. The spirit asks Iko, is Ash your master? Iko replies, no, I'm not his servant, but you could say he's my master. Hearing Iko's answer, the spirit says, your master is very brave, trying to defeat that dragon with all his strength, but without the Ark, he won't be able to do it, because without a dragon, he's just an ordinary human. After hearing all this, Iko asks the spirit, then what can I do? The spirit replies, you can make the Arkansas. You're also a dragon, right? And in this mansion, you have everything you need to make it. With that, the spirit brings many parts of the Ark around Iko. Seeing so many Ark parts, Iko is confused and asks the spirit, how can I make an Ark big enough for Ash with all these parts? The spirit answers, this is Ash's size, and these parts are designed to create armor. So, get ready to make a proper Arkansas. Upon hearing this, Iko quickly starts crafting the Ark. Humans must be smarter than dragons, so they can make good artifacts. Besides, Iko heard many things about artifacts from Ash this morning, about how powerful they are. Therefore, Iko immediately starts crafting the artifact with that in mind. Meanwhile, on the other side, we see Ash who hasn't given up. He wants to defeat the dragon and save Iko from inside its body. He keeps using a sticker to make sure Iko is still alive. Then he shouts, Iko, stay there. I'm coming. I will defeat this dragon for sure. All of this is also seen and heard by Iko from within the domain. Seeing Ash fighting so hard for her, Iko becomes very emotional and quickly finishes crafting the artifact perfectly. The woman is shocked to see the artifact Iko made so quickly and perfectly. On the other side, we see that the artifact automatically transfers to Ash. This means that when someone finishes an artifact, it automatically goes to the master of the dragon. With the artifact, Ash says to Sylvia, You've helped me a lot, Sylvia. I'm very grateful to you, but now you should rest. I'll handle the rest. After saying that, Ash steps forward and thinks to himself, If I can't control all dragons, I must be able to control this one too. Then, Ash jumps onto the dragon and tries to control it. In a short time, he manages to control the dragon, then flies high and attacks it with very powerful magic, killing the dragon instantly. The sky clears up, and Ash manages to save Iko, who falls at just the right moment. The scene then shifts to a small party at the student council office to celebrate their victory. There, Reba kisses both Ash and Sylvia. Ash becomes so embarrassed that he almost faints, and seeing Ash embarrassed because of another girl, Iko starts hitting him. We are shown a memory of Sylvia crying, and there we see a young Ash approaching her and saying, Can I help you? Young Sylvia replies, No, I don't need your help. You just want to take my toy, while holding her dragon toy. This scene takes us back to the present, where the adult Sylvia is looking at the toy and remembering the boy. She doesn't know that the boy was Ash. In the next scene, we see an auditorium where Reba introduces Sylvia as a new member of the student council. After Sylvia, she also introduces Ash as a new member. However, none of the students are happy to see Ash. They all wonder who allowed him to join the student council. Hearing this, Ash feels sad. But at the right moment, his close friend shouts to cheer him up, which makes him feel better. After that, Iko also steps forward to introduce herself. She confidently looks at all the students and then lets out a loud roar. At first, the students don't understand what Iko is trying to do. But a few moments later, some begin to laugh, followed by the rest. Seeing everyone laugh at her, Iko feels very sad. The scene then shifts to Iko and Ash, where Iko is furious because everyone laughed at her. She keeps saying that she doesn't know what people think of her. Hearing this, Ash says, forget about all that but today you look really cute in that outfit. After hearing this, Ash becomes very embarrassed, but Iko doesn't pay attention and instead grabs a poster from Ash's hands. She asks, what is this? The Silver Knight fan club? Hearing this, Ash responds that it's just a fan club. Iko then asks, are you a fan of this club? Ash replies, yes, kind of, 
In the middle of this conversation, the scene shifts to a place that looks like a battlefield, where we see a large army preparing to attack. At the front of this army, there is a woman ready for battle. She plans to lead the attack. The woman calls her dragon, which can fly like Sylvia's dragon. This suggests a connection between the woman and Sylvia, but we'll find out the details later. The scene then returns to the academy, where we see all the students in the student council classroom. There, we also see Ash, and since it's the first day, all the students are introducing themselves. In the middle of these introductions, Reba arrives and takes Sylvia, Iko, and Ash to the student council office. There, Reba asks Sylvia, Do you know anything about your sister? It turns out the woman we saw in the battle earlier is Sylvia's sister. Hearing this question from Reba, Sylvia immediately looks very anxious, as if she is very afraid of her sister. With Sylvia's frightened expression, the scene shifts, and we are shown Sylvia's sister. After that, the scene returns to Sylvia, and we see that she looks sad all day, as if she doesn't want her sister to come to the academy. When Sylvia goes home feeling sad and scared, Ash sees her and asks, Is something wrong? You look really afraid. However, Sylvia replies, No, nothing's wrong. The scene then shifts to the day when Sylvia's sister is expected to arrive in town. To celebrate Sylvia's sister's arrival, a grand event is held. This is because Sylvia's sister holds a very high position in the military, and most of the kingdom's victories in war are credited to her. Moreover, Sylvia's sister is also a princess. In the middle of this celebration, the scene shifts to Sylvia and Ash, where Ash asks, Why are you so afraid of your sister? Sylvia replies, I'm not afraid, just nervous to meet her. As they speak, Sylvia's sister has already arrived in the kingdom. We see that Sylvia's sister arrives with a large mechanical dragon, which is her warship used to attack other kingdoms. Seeing the ship, Reba says, So, this is the silent Venus destroyer of Princess Veronica. It's truly incredible. Where all the citizens of the Dragner Kingdom stand to welcome Princess Veronica, Sylvia's sister. Princess Veronica steps off her mechanical dragon, and Sylvia greets her respectfully, Welcome to the Dragner Kingdom, sister. However, Princess Veronica looks at Sylvia with suspicion and says, Who are you? Then, she immediately attacks Sylvia. Sylvia dodges the attack and says, Finally, you've figured it out. Sylvia removes her mask, revealing that she is actually Sylvia's maid, not the real Sylvia. At the same time, the real Sylvia runs up and apologizes for being late. However, before Sylvia can say anything, her sister immediately attacks her, tearing Sylvia's clothes in public, leaving her deeply embarrassed. Before Sylvia can feel any more humiliated, her maid quickly covers her with a cloth. Seeing all this, Ash wants to help Sylvia, but Princess Veronica's guards stop him. Ash's dragon, Eko, says, What kind of sister is this, humiliating her sibling in public? After the incident, Princess Veronica enters the kingdom, and the scene shifts to a girl at the station, then back to Ash, where we learn that Ash is working part-time to earn money. The scene then shifts to Sylvia, standing near a glass door, reflecting on why her sister humiliated her in front of everyone. Sylvia wonders if her sister hates her. In the next scene, we see Sylvia training hard, using Reba as her opponent. Since Reba is very strong and is the president of the student council, Sylvia becomes very exhausted. However, Sylvia doesn't give up. She wants to show her sister that she is working hard to pursue her dreams. However, due to the intense training, Sylvia eventually faints. In the next scene, Sylvia opens her eyes and sees Ash in front of her. Ash asks, Why were you training so hard today? Sylvia responds that she wants to prove to her brother that she is no longer the weak Sylvia. She is capable of working hard for her dreams. While thinking about her brother, Sylvia reflects on everything. At that moment, Reba almost enters the room, but after hearing their conversation, she leaves without interrupting. The scene then shifts to Iko, who, for some reason, is trying to do something with Ash, as if she's attempting to flirt with him. However, before anything can happen, Reba appears and stops them, saying to Ash, You shouldn't be doing things like that with your dragon. In public, it's best not to do such things, she adds. Hearing all this, Ash feels very strange because he believes he didn't do anything. 
It was all initiated by the mischievous girl. Next, we see a scene at the student council office, where Reba looks at a poster in front of her and says that this is an old terrorist, recently spotted in the kingdom. Seeing the poster, we realize that the girl is none other than the one who attacked Ash in the first episode. So, this girl is a terrorist. The scene then transitions to the entire kingdom, where we observe that construction is taking place all over, as efforts are made to repair the damage caused by the battle between Ash, Reba, Sylvia, and the dragon. Meanwhile, we also see a scene of Sylvia, where a girl is explaining the history of the museum and the entire Dragner Kingdom to Sylvia. After hearing the history, Sylvia angrily asks the girl, Why are you telling me all this? I don't want to know any of this. The girl replies, You're a princess, so you need to know everything. Your older sister is very knowledgeable about all these things. She knows about politics, about war, she knows everything. As the younger sister, you should know all of this too. Hearing this, Sylvia feels extremely displeased because she keeps being compared to her older sister. This girl, Asin, then hijacks the entire hall where Sylvia is. The explosion that occurs during this hijacking is visible to everyone outside, including Ash, Eko, and Princess Veronica, who eventually sees the blast. Upon witnessing the explosion, Princess Veronica begins to leave without doing anything. Ash asks, Where are you going? Why aren't you doing anything? You're the princess now. In response, Princess Veronica says that she is going to her ship. The scene then shifts, and we see Princess Veronica's ship, where Princess Veronica, Ash, Eko, Reba, and the others are on board. Moments later, the girl Asin contacts Princess Veronica on her ship and asks, How are you, princess? While introducing another girl, she says, You must recognize this girl. Seeing the girl, Veronica says, She's Jessica. The girl's name is revealed to be Jessica. Then, Asin says that she has placed many small mechanical bombs around Jessica. Though small, these bombs are powerful enough to destroy the entire hall. Asin threatens that if anyone tries to intervene, she will detonate the bombs, which will not only destroy the hall but a large part of the kingdom as well. After delivering her threat, Asin cuts off communication. After the contact ends, Ash looks very anxious and wonders what to do. However, Princess Veronica remains calm and thoughtful. The scene then flashes back to the past, where we see the reason why Jessica was captured. Sometime earlier, Sylvia and Jessica were talking. Sylvia told Jessica that if she wanted to save everyone, she needed to tell them that she was the princess. They came here for her, and because of her, they might kill everyone. Hearing this, Jessica agreed that Sylvia was right, but as her servant, she would not let Sylvia be in danger. Jessica offered to pose as the princess while Sylvia acted as her servant, so all the threats would be directed toward her. At first, Sylvia was shocked, but after Jessica insisted, she agreed. Jessica then told the terrorists that she was Sylvia, the princess. They then captured Jessica and tortured her. The scene returns to the present, where Princess Veronica devises a plan and begins explaining it to everyone. Princess Veronica says they will use Ash's bait. They will send him to the council hall to distract the terrorists. Before Princess Veronica and Reba can explain the plan further, Eko angrily interrupts, refusing to let Ash go to such a dangerous place. She's worried about what might happen to Ash. Before Eko can say more, Ash tries to calm her down. He explains that he's just an ordinary man, while Princess Veronica is a princess and Reba is the council president. Who holds great power. If Reba goes, the terrorists might kill the hostages to protect themselves. But they won't be as concerned about Ash, who's just an ordinary man, making him the best choice to go. Reluctantly, Eko eventually agrees with the plan. Ash then reassures the very worried Eko, saying, I know you're very concerned about me, Eko, but I have to go. I have a responsibility to you. You have to make me a very powerful bow so I can easily and safely get the hostages and myself out of there," said Ash, adding, I'm counting on you, Eko. As soon as Ash finished speaking, the scene shifts, and we see Ash surrendering in front of the Asian girl and the terrorists. Meanwhile, Eko retreats back into her subconscious, the place where she previously created the bow. There, Eko meets the mysterious woman again, who says, this time, you must forge an even stronger bow, so you must hurry. Upon hearing this, 
Iko feels frustrated and says, how am I supposed to make a stronger bow? Seeing Iko's confusion, the mysterious woman explains that the bow isn't formed from parts, but from the bond between master and dragon. The stronger your bond with Ash, the stronger your bow will be, the woman clarifies. Hearing this, Iko begins to reflect.